Oh, so we, we talked about kind of like the rise and fall of mm-hmm. TGSP, right? Let's talk about what's going on right now. Okay. Yeah, we made y'all wait 45 minutes until we talk about yeah. this. Let's talk about what's going on. So, Gemini Scorpio Podcast, episode 64. 64. We uh, collab with a, um, a podcast, te- Tequila Talk Podcast. Yeah. And Shout out to Tequila Talk. Well, Jazz. Cool. Shout out to them. Mm-hmm. And this, first of all, this episode was terrible. Yo, we watched this shit today, and I was like, who the fuck let us drink that much? Where's One, the direction? Why can't we finish a fucking topic? <laughs> that shit was great. Why are we always wandering off a topic? Like, it just was so bad. It was, and you were saying it in the podcast, like, this is so good, but it's so bad. Yeah, I said it. I'm like, it's, it's so good, terrible. but it's so bad. We were all over the place. Lex, shout out to Lex. The bartender just kept feeding us shot, and they're the tequila talk show, so they drink on their show. That was the goal. Yeah, that was the goal. Like, For Jay, me, I yeah. think Jay's goal was to get yeah. the tequila talk show drunk. We got drunk, yeah. and um, it was terrible. It was, it was, it was terrible. Great points, great, you know, great. It could have been great conversation, um, but it was a we lie. fumbled that bag. We we did fumble that bag. However. Still jokes. It was tons of jokes. It was, like, oh, you want funny? You will go get the funny. You want, you want, you want to get your kikis on? It, it, it will give you a nice little chuckle. Um, and it's viral now. This is episode sixty four, which is also about two years ago. Mm. This is a two year old. Let, can we put that in perspective one more time? It's this is a two, two year, year old uh, episode. Episode. So there's. I don't think people understand the amount of growth. That happens two years with people um, in the way they approach things, in their perspectives, in their pitch, in the way they communicate. So let's just put that in perspective. This is over two years. I ain't giving them that. that, I don't want to give the people that much leeway. I'm going to tell you why. No, no, no. We stand on what we say. But we might might say it different now. No, well, that's true. That's true. We might say it different now. Yeah, that's facts. But what I will say is. I was being real goofy on that one. I ain't that girl. But what I will say is I feel (laughs) like, first of all, let's talk about these viral clips and just the internet the internet is a very strange I, place listen i do it because i know people gonna bite yeah you feel me but at the end of the day let's talk some reality of it yeah my nigga it's a 35 second yeah. clip you're not going to get no context out of a 35 second clip it's like if you believe what you see in a 35 second clip over two we recorded for two hours and two I, hours. I just feel like, but why are y'all making up your own context? <laughs> like, like if you don't know, you don't want to go just find out. Why make up scenarios? Like, and that's just where I just know the internet. Like, you just you hear gotta let the internet it. be the internet. You gotta let them be the internet. It, it's like you gotta they let them literally it. make up their whole. Like, you would have thought they knew the person, the the people, everybody personally. The way they make up their own dialogue, like they know what they were gonna say, know what they were doing behind that, and this is the reason. And I know it's the reason because I know her. No, you don't. You Facts. don't know these people from Adam. Can like, the paint. How do you know what they meant? Facts. And, and I just think you know, like when it comes to that, like I guess it ain't really nothing to explain. I yeah. think um, I feel like people be getting beside themselves. Like it's like yeah, people. That's why Will the, Smith smacking people. Yeah, and people in the yeah. comments just be like, I just feel like these yeah. motherfuckers are crazy. Like I just, I just feel like. You know, Jazz was talking about how she dealt with her, her children, or whatever, and and, and it, it it could it could pretty much so not be right, but we can't ignore the fact that and, shit. We probably all been in these situations. And on top of that, I feel like people don't understand. People have a you know, and we were talking about this too. Podcasters are also a talent, so it is our job to get up here and entertain. There is times we're going to get up here and be super dramatic in our pitch or super dramatic in our delivery or super ignorant, or, or just and... super ignorant, but it's also with purpose to entertain. Right. So if I say that I rather die on the side of the road, do it mean I'm a really die? No, I mean, it still was crazy. It, it was, that's fine. But, <laughs> yeah, it, but as your job as a creator is to, dr- you know, make yeah. it even more enticing. Like yeah. that's stupid as fuck. <laughs> Either way in retrospect it's still you can't tell nobody's condescending this right. you can't tell their jokey pitch you don't know them and i think it's dope so respect them as a creator yeah, nah, fact. and, and that's wanna... what i think like you have to respect a, a podcaster a host all the as a creator first which is their it's their job to entertain so i might be super dramatic or super sarcastic and of course you can't tell or understand the context because you don't know me and know my level of sarcasm or I you mean, know, jokes. Like I mean, you just no, no, you're right. I think that's the humane way to look yeah. at it. However, 
They're not. Being a creator, I think you're not supposed to expect respect from nobody. And you know that's what I'm saying? Facts. We're, we're, we're here I to put. Absolutely agree. You know what I'm saying? We're These here. People don't owe you nothing. Exactly. Like, we're here to put on a show or whatever, and whoever gravitate to it, gravitate to it. Yeah. Those who don't, don't. And I think social. you said something earlier. Like, it's like if you live by the by the, the, the comment, you won't die by the comment. Not for you get real. what I'm saying? So it's like yep. if you. If you get overly excited when you get a bunch yeah. of your likes and be hurt good comments, your feelings gonna be hurt when you get you. a bunch of bad yeah. negative comments. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is, and and yeah. we all are, are human, and we fall victim to that yeah. that 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 reality of being super excited. We knew we're human. But I'm not finna play. Listen, because you know, at this point, I have, and you know, since we've talked about our rise and fall, I have lost a friendship due to the viral moments getting too extreme. Yeah. All right. And this is what I will say. Yeah. If you want to be out here and filming and whether whatever your content is, it is going on the internet. You have no idea when this is going to resurface. So if you don't want it out there, don't say it. Don't do if it. If you don't want it to be seen, don't do it. Don't record because it. Because at the end of the day, at any moment, somebody could pull your video from five years ago and be like, ooh, that girl, da da da. And you may look like a whole different girl, a whole different guy. Your whole perspective done changed, but you have to that is the power of the internet. And if you are out here to entertain or to show content, then you have to also Take wave off that it. risk because that's uh, that you have to take what come with it you can't be you know and i'm not saying it doesn't it's not bothersome sometimes i'm not saying but you have to mentally prepare yourself like okay if this goes super viral right now am i gonna be okay like you know don't come out here telling no crazy tea if you don't want because if it resurfaced and it, you're going to be listen it's gonna hurt especially right. when the people take it out of context you know because even in jazz coop's case you know and i'm and i just want to say this because jazz coop is one of my real friends and um we are very close and she's a very inspiring woman to me i've known her since i was younger uh she has aided me through a lot of things through my life you know what i'm saying so i just want to first set the record straight that my girl is not only a great mother but a phenomenal woman um she has a great career and she does her thing right what well, she comes on here and says in her personal spaces and her content or whatever, and, you know, she's also a creator. She's a talent. So she's also dr dramatizing this for you, mm -hmm. right? But all that to say is that that is also something that she has to take into consideration. Like, look, I put it out there, and that's what it is. We can't control the masses and, you know, them coming out saying, oh, what a toxic mother or, you know, I think it's very mean of people. You know, they do go to the extremes, but I've dealt with this again with another friend and it's, it's hard on both sides, but it's really our job because it's our job. Like, you get what I'm saying? It's our job to kind of take it with a grain of salt. Like, it's not the people because the masses, no offense, are sheep. Like, they mm. follow they followed the waves. Like if the waves say she corny, she corny. And you know, it's going to be a little stream of a tide that may go over here to think the other way, but the majority of the waves going to go the same way, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, you know, it sucks, but you know, I think that creators need to do a better job at you not reading the skin. comments, you gotta have tough, not reading the skin. comments. Just don't read the comments. You know, everybody get dragged this time or two, you know what I'm saying? Like, but you can't read the comments. You gotta have tough skin though. For real. Yeah. At the end of the day, at I think, um, day, I wanted to ask like, then this is kind of going left, but I'm just curious. Since we're here, we, I feel like we got yeah. to give it to them, get the people what they want, whatever. Why do you think... How can I ask this? You know, I'm being, this I want to be respectful how I ask this question. Why do you think... Jay don't know what to say. Because um, we, like, we can't ignore... I think I had this conversation before, but we, we can't ignore this, this narrative that the world tried to paint of a black woman, right? Yeah. And that's angry black yeah. woman, whatever. Always. But... And I asked this before, but I, I'm going to ask you, like, why do you think, where does it come from? Like, when, when, when Jazz makes a statement and say, I would rather die on a road before I call my baby father or my yeah. child's father. And it's like, on one side, I can understand because it's like, yo, if I've been doing this for so long by myself, then I would die doing it by myself. You get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I, I, I kind of understand it, but it's like, I'm curious to think, like, where do you think it come from? Which way? Which part exactly? Just her that, 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 or no, not the, even her the part of just a lot of people painting black women as angry. <laughs> well, the, the constant need to feel like I have to protect myself because I don't want to. Okay. Again, I want to be. Well, I want to be fair in it, though. You know what I'm saying? So I'm you not, said the the black woman's constant need to feel like they got to protect themselves. Yeah, and and well, and, one we're always often in unsafe places like you know what i mean like where we're in territories that are already built against us uh whether it's in whether it's amongst men or it's in corporate america or it's 
you know, in your household, like, you know, like even when I talk about things like, for example, like I'm Jamaican, they favoritize their boys. The girls get put to work and talk too crazy and the boys get to sit on their ass and do whatever the fuck they want. Like, but I feel like that's a lot of cultures. Like, uh, men are a lot of times praised higher than women. Um, also unsafe places like dealing with other aggressive men or like being in unsafe territory, like men taking advantage or, you know, you know, not to get too deep into it, but just constantly putting them in uncomfortable positions, right? In terms of Jasmine's point, the reason why I'm relating the message, because even when I dissect the message of what she may have been trying to say, or the message that could have been delivered, is that she's not really saying that like, oh, she can't call her baby father for anything. But at the end of the day, people don't want to acknowledge the imbalances of a mother and a father's duty. You know, a mother doesn't need to ask because she knows what's going on all the time. You get what I'm saying? And we talked about this, just the need to even have to ask. I don't want to have to ask because you should kind of know what's going on in your child's life. But because guys simply get choices like, okay, well, you'll take them to school Monday through Thursday and maybe on Friday I'll take them to the game, you know? Or like she said, if you watch further than on the clip, if, if you're really a parent, why do you get a choice? You know, well, not this weekend. I can't watch my kids. Mothers don't really get that luxury. And it's not to say that whose fault. It's not to pose blame on the man, but that is our reality. And I think the problem why women get so defensive is because people don't allow us to live in our reality. Like they constantly kind of tell us like that doesn't exist or that it, as soon as they say something of this sort, that's her reality. Her perspective is, ah, you're such a toxic mother because why would you not let her see her father? And now all these narratives are thrown, but she's really saying her reality. My reality is that I really don't get the support that I give. So I would rather die before I ask for it because if you were going to do it, you would have did it anyway. Yeah, you know, um, and that's why I brought it up because I definitely like um, empathize with that, right? Yeah. And, and I can understand the pain and frustration in it. But at the same time, I feel like in those situations, I think we both have our realities and why can't we just allow each other to have our own reality instead right. of continuing to have to point the finger at each other because what it sounds like is it's like it's like for some reason your reality has to downplay my role as not no not not only a father or a man right like for example i think yeah you might know the the teacher name because you go every day right mm -hmm. or you might know mm -hmm. uh when your your daughter come on a ministry or, or, or whatever the case may right. be and i might not know but it's yeah. things that i'm doing that you might not know it's, it's okay. things that the man the, the things that i'm taking care of in the home and for the family that you might not know. And if we continue to to go through this constant back and forth and and power struggle and just pointing a finger at each other, we're never gonna get anywhere. So when she say things like, Yeah, I would rather die on the side of the road because you ain't been here yet or whatever the case may be. Yeah, though. yeah. I'm just saying like you said But that's my point. Cause I agree with you and mm -hmm. I think that's what you're saying is a fair segment. But she didn't say because he's not doing this. What she said was her reality. Right. I would rather die on the side of the road before I ask him for help. That did not indicate if I ask him for help, he's not going to help me. She didn't so, say that. Can I ask you this, though? No, you know you're what right. I'm so, so what I'm saying is when you first started, you said we have to let people live in their reality. So why nobody let her live in her reality? And I'm going to ask you because I think personally as a man, I feel like your, your reality is a direct representation of who I am. Because when you say this, you said she ain't say that. And you're right. She didn't. However, if you would rather die on the side of the road than to call me because you feel like you've been doing it yourself, that says a lot about me. You can, I mean, I think as a man, that's, that's how I look at it. I feel like, and, and your reality could be right. But if I am, if I am a good person or if I am a good man, I, just, I, I so don't understand that reality. speak her truths? Because here's the thing. I get what you're saying. But if that is her experience, and mm -hmm. we've dealt with that, right? Like right. in a relationship, right? Your experience is yours. So... My, and my experience is mine. And our stories may sound completely different to the, the people we tell or we share with, right? But in retrospect, if that is my truth, it, it really, how you feel about my truth really don't make or make me anything. That, that's my truth and what I live in, right. right? So if that happens to make you feel like you're not, why are you, you know, kind of why are you making me feel like I'm not doing my part or like what that I'm not being the man that I am, that I know me to be, right? Mm -hmm. I feel like 
that's the conversation amongst you two, but she's not talking to you. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, so she's not talking to him. And maybe that is a conversation they may have had. Like, look, or who knows how many times they had it or whatever. We don't know. But I'm not talking to him. If I'm talking to him and you feel like I'm attacking your character, understood. But if I'm just speaking my truth to my demographic and my peers and I'm not attacking you and saying, nah, my baby father ain't shit. She ain't get up there like, my baby father ain't shit. I said that nigga for nothing. He don't pull up. He don't do nothing. She didn't say that. She said, but I would rather die so, before I ask. And, and I think that's why I'm getting confused because, like, you're right. But it can be insinuated. It's like, again, it, it's not what you're saying all the time. It's you mean how like you're the viral it. moments, what they insinuate about her, about what she said, right? Yeah, but Tough I want to get away right? from, I want to get away from, I want to get away because we know them and we know Jazz to be yeah. a good mother. I want to get away from just the in personal. The, you, right, you're talking yeah. about in and just I'm saying in general, I'm using that as an analogy right, so, that's what we're talking about. So, but I get what you're so saying. What I'm, what I'm saying is, yeah, if you're not, you are saying that by saying X, Y, and Z. That's un, 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 unconsciously, you are saying that by saying X, Y, and Z. You might not be saying it verbally and, 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 and verbatim, but you're at, just like we talked the other day. We said if you, if you are, uh, what's the word? Um, if you are um, omitting, right. then you are lying, right? So if you're saying this, then that's saying this as well. Can I ask you something else? Yeah. Okay, so you know how a lot of people are super, there's people who are super independent and hate asking people for help in mm, general. Right. Right. It doesn't mean that anybody has even necessarily let them down. They That's just have something where I hate asking people for help. Right. Would it be a difference if she said, I would rather die before I ask anybody, anybody. for help? I think it. Because now what, what is her? Should her friends be like? Well, bitch, why that make it seem like I wouldn't help you? So again, like, you know what I'm saying? But if that's her, like, that's still a perspective. Like, for like, again, if I genuinely hate asking somebody for help and I say, I would rather die before asking somebody for help. Does that mean my friend wouldn't help me? No, I'm not. So nah. not. So, I have friends not, that would right. help. Let me answer the question. So I think it's, it's not right. But when we're talking about this example or in a general, this yeah, example, I an feel analogy. like an analogy. I feel like when you single somebody out then it makes it about that person. Now, if you make it generally, right, that's a different conversation and that's the real conversation where I want to get to. And it's not, it's not really about, that's why I said it's not really about them. My question is really, where does that come from? Like, even if you are that person, I feel like- Feeling unsafe. What, right, what, like, where does that come from that, yo, before I ask anybody for help, not just singing yeah. out somebody, before I ask anybody for help, I would rather die. And I'm like, yo, how can we because, get out of that? No, and, and that's a fair question. And I think that some of it does align with like, you know, obviously people are creatures of habitat or of habits or things they've experienced. Right. Right. So I, ideally, I'm going to say that if anybody that I've heard that said, oh, I would rather die before I ask anybody for help. Let's generalize yeah. it. Right. Then I'm assume that the time that they did ask somebody help, they made they them feel like they wanted to die. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because what made it, it must have stung that deep the last time I asked for some help or the last time somebody told me they were going to do something for me. It cut them that deep that they. Like I like I felt like I was going to die that day. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, what I mean, I think it's expression, you know, what I'm saying. And I think that like even like when I hear you asking your question, um, because I deal with this a lot, like uh, just even being the type of person I am, I'm super passionate in the way I speak. Mm -hmm. Right. And the things I say. Right. So ideally, if something made me feel like I want to die, that's something I might say, like, I would rather die mm -hmm. asking for help. Like, right. you know, what I'm saying. But it doesn't necessarily like I said, but I feel like a lot of times. Because women are identified as only soft and feminine, whenever they switch a gear to being passionate or overly assertive, they're noted, they're notated as angry or something above these realms. But realistically, I, I feel so deeply that I also express just as deeply. And my question is really, and I think you might have answered it, but I'm really trying to dig deeper in of where did that come from? Where did that stem from? You feel like, how do we get past that? I like, think that's for everybody, question. it's going to be subjective because it just depends where it's coming from. Like, I feel like everybody has different backgrounds. So depending who you're talking to, if you're asking me specifically, like I could tell you, it's just a lot of I've been, you know, let down a lot. What, 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 like, and, and I haven't per se said, like, I would die without asking for help. You know, I definitely appreciate I have a great support system and just a village. However, you know. I can only imagine in my spaces where I don't want to ask for help or the things like that is from being let down or being misheard we, or misjudged or these things, which a lot of people have experienced. Let's, the let's, let's set aside the doc. Cause I think that might be yeah. too personal. We both have friends now. I think I overheard you say, yeah, we have friends that acknowledge to the world or to social media that they feel like they can't talk to nobody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And if we talk about the, let's, let's, cause that's probably too extreme. Let's say yeah. 
the, 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 it's certain friends that will ask, will, will come to you and yeah, say, yeah, like, hey, something talk. is going on, yeah, right? But it's other yeah. friends who feel like they don't have nobody that they can talk yeah. to. And them saying that, yeah. that could be taken personal amongst all of their friends if they feel like they can come to them. It can be, but I also feel like it doesn't have to be. And I just think that's where... It just, like I said, I feel like some things are uh, subjective because mm -hmm. I, I've been through similar situations. And when my when I felt like my friend was expressing that she didn't have anybody, I had to correct her and tell her out of love, like, you do have people, but you also have to be open to accepting the care that we want to give to you. If you are going through something and you and don't know if I'm available, call me and say, hey, are you in the mental space or can I talk to you? Don't automatically assume that I'm having a great day and you don't want to ruin it. I think it's an education thing. And, and that's I, where I want to yeah, go. Not to yeah. cut you off. Yeah. Right there. How, how do we break that constant cycle of feeling like I would be a burden on you or whatever the case may be? Why, it's communication. Like, yeah, and, I'm, communication. and that's really it. That's, that's where, I, that's, yeah, where you said it. Like, that's the conversation I want to have. How do we break but, that as but, black people, not but, just women? Yeah, no, I get women it. and men. Women and men. So it's communication, but the communication has to be based around love. So, you know, I, I got this new therapist. Uh, shout out to Symphony. I think she's so dope. And, um, you know, you know, she's been teaching me some things like even in, when you're justified, you still have to respond out of love. Like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Because you're love. You're, like, that's who you are. You know what I mean? I think like a lot of people are always on guard or always defensive towards another party or just I'm feeling from feeling unsafe or judged or whatever the reason may be. But then they end up responding in ways like it, it kind of pushes everybody off. Right. Mm -hmm. So all that to say, you know, right now what I practice is speaking with intention and kindness, even if I feel like it's unjust or unright because the only way you can get somebody to hear what you are saying is if you approach it kindly right mm -hmm. um trust me <laughs> journey okay but what i'm saying is if both sides it would take so what happens is if you feel like guarded or something and you're like i don't want to be a burden you come talk to me and i don't hey Reciprocate. you can talk to okay, me okay okay right then now we're in a we're, we're in a we're in a quarrel because nobody reached out right now if you're like i feel like a burden you want to talk to me and i feel like well if you feel like i'm a burden then just don't talk because i'm not about to baby you mm. that's what a lot of friendships do like I, i've seen i've seen girls vividly and i only can talk from girls because i'm a female literally their friend will feel like yo i you know i feel away like i feel like you ain't you ain't showing me as much love as this person or you ain't doing you know like you don't treat me like this much a friend and it's like oh well if you feel that way then you must be on some shit so you know you could go your way when really all they had to say no 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 you know you're my girl like i i, I just might have not been thinking of that or you know looking at it that way like you know i'm sorry if i you know if that made you feel away but you you know reassure them right that works both ways like mm -hmm. you know everybody has to be willing to play that tug of war if it's just on one person sometimes it can get strenuous and the person can back down like i'm tired of doing it or whatever but it has to be corrected behavior so do you think and going back to the relationship, is it fair to say that it's a constant trend of both parties being tired, right? Because, yeah, and, I sure. think, and I think sure. if we can give each other grace, more grace, right? Like hypothetically, the man called the woman more and be like, hey, yeah. be more intentional. Y'all yeah. do want to know X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z. Then maybe, they, maybe their reality wouldn't right. be. Because I feel like a lot of relationships go through that. Like, it's like somebody be crying out for love. And it's like, bro, I'm doing enough, bro. Like, I'm not about to keep doing all that. Like, I like. But in re retrospect, if that's your person and that's who you choose in, then you kind of have to say, you know, if that's what she needs or that's what he needs, I got to do that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because some people do require a little more love and some people do need certain things to help them feel loved. And if you're going to take on that responsibility, then you have to fully take it. You don't really kind of get to choose if you don't want to do it or not, because what happens is then you leave like people, not you. I'm saying like in general, people leave that window open for that uncertainty, that unsureness. And you already know relationships fail in uncertainty and unsureness and lack of security. You know what I'm saying? So all that to say is I just feel like if people just gave, like if somebody's asking you for something, like now if somebody's just shutting down and just not telling you, it's like you don't know. But if somebody's like telling you like this is what I need, like I, I don't feel love this way or I don't, I feel like it's okay for somebody to reach out to them and say, okay, well, let me help you here or let me do this here. And if you can't, that's okay. But then you, People need to be honest with that, too. I just can't fulfill those I needs. Think, I can't do that. But I think, you know, like, again, because we, this isn't something new. So we got to yeah. understand that we're dealing with years and years. I yeah. mean, hundreds of years of, of backlash and, 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 and baggage from yeah. each other, right? Yeah. From uh, family ties, and whatever it may be. And society is changing. Like, you know, new school don't make it any easier either. Like. Right. So I think 
I feel like it has to be this constant grace given. And what I mean by mm-hmm. that is because when I hear you say, if somebody is telling you, if somebody is telling you, and a lot of times the things you think you're saying, you're not saying, right? That's true. As men That's and women. True. You feel me? So it's, it's a lot true. of times you crying out for help in but ways that I can't it, understand. understand it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So though. it's like, that's I feel real. like if we continue to, if we can really build yeah. this these relationships and be graceful and, yeah. and really do everything out of love and be yeah. intentional with I mean, everybody needs therapy. Yeah, I mean, honest. but no, like, I'm, I'm, I'm really saying that yeah. because I feel like when I hear, I hear the frustration and yo, I would rather die God. on a, <laughs> like I, I hear it, right? Yeah. But I'm like, yo, I'm not, how, how I'm not looking come, at yeah. it. I'm not looking at it like, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm a joke in the podcast. Yeah, I'm a joke. Yeah. But when I sit back and think of it, I'm not looking at it like, damn, she's fucked up. The yeah. first thing I'm thinking is, damn, why do she feel yeah. like that? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And especially if you're saying that yeah. your father, that the child's father is a good father. Right. Why is this a reality? Right. Not saying that your reality shouldn't right. be that, but I'm, right. I'm like, damn, how can we change that narrative? What, what, like, where do we well, begin to I work like on it? What I like about it, though, as well, is because just like in generalized, like she was also open that you know, maybe I'm not there yet and maybe mm-hmm. I'm not that mature and, you know, my pride or my ego may make me feel like that. And I think that if people can also do that, yeah, for sure, that can also speed up some process if you can just say, like, you know, I'm just not there yet to see that what you're doing is enough. Like, you know, or like, you know, like being open to even that side. That's an ongoing fight that yeah. we just, just... But I think it's just, it's repetition and continuously giving grace and continually giving patience. And I'm not saying you know that you overextend, but as long as you're doing the best you can, I think that, you know, it, it'll fix it. It'll get better. And it, and I feel like there's, it, it gets better. You know what I mean? Just depending on how much work you want to put in, like, you know, I'm really on an intentional journey right now. So like, you know, I'm just trying to speak with intention as much as I can. Um, because I am also one of them people who sometimes I'll cry out for things and I don't know how to say it. Mm. Like, you know what I'm saying? But I'll, Say it in other ways or do it like that. I am one of those people. And so I understand what that feels like on the opposite end and the forefront.